Hi everyone and welcome to this video on finding x values when y is not zero. Specifically we're going to take up page 316 number 11 in the McGraw-Ryerson Principles of Mathematics textbook. Um, the first thing I want us to consider though is in general how we would do this. This is in standard form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c and normally if we're trying to find the zeros what we would do is we would Another way to call those zeros is the x-intercept. We would set y equal to 0 and then solve for x. And so the two ways we would have to solve for x would be we could use uh, factoring. And the other way we could do that is use the quadratic formula. And so the quadratic formula is negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And so those are the two ways we could solve those. And this will always work provided that there are zeros or x-intercepts. Now what do we do if we're not asked to find the x-intercepts? If instead we're given y is some other value, but we're to find the x-values when y is that other value? Well, the whole idea here is we sub in the value for y, and then we go ahead and we can rearrange this equation. So we have to always set it equal to zero. So if we're subbing it in for y, we bring that value over and subtract it from the c value. And then we get zero equals ax squared plus bx plus c minus y. And so that is how we would have to go ahead and solve that. Now c minus y would become one whole number, but I'm just doing that for the general case. So that's what we're going to do in page 316, number 11. Let's have a look at what that question says. The question says this. If a baseball is batted at an angle of 35 degrees to the ground, the distance that the ball travels can be estimated using the equation d equals 0.0034s squared plus 0.004s minus 0.3, where s is the bat speed in kilometers per hour, and d is the distance flown in meters. At what speed does the batter hit the, need to hit the ball in order to have a home run where the ball flies 125 meters? So there's our 125 meter number. That's going to be what we're putting in, not for the y in this case, but we're going to put it in for d. Then we're going to subtract 125 from both sides, solve that using, it doesn't look like it's going to be factorable, so we're going to have to use a quadratic formula, and then we'll be able to see what we get. And we'll analyze that at the end and look at a graph. So let's do that here. I'm going to sub d equals 125. So 125 equals 0.0034s squared plus 0.004s minus 0.3. Now I need to subtract 125 from both sides to get it off the left side. That's going to give me the following. 0 equals 0.0034s squared plus 0.004s minus 125.3. This is my a value. It's a big arrow. This is my a value. This is my b value. This is my c value. Keep in mind that c is negative in this case. So let's go ahead and sub those into the quadratic formula. In this case, the independent variable is s. So I'm going to write s equals, not x equals, because x is not the independent variable, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So negative b, negative 0 0.0004, plus or minus the square root, remember the plus or minus is just going to give us two different answers at the end, uh, 0 0.004 all squared minus 4 times a is 0 0.0034, and c is negative 125.3. And we stretch that square root to be over all the numbers underneath it. And then we're going to divide that by 2 times 0 0.0034, the a value. Now notice here, because I have a negative there and a negative there, that it's going to be positive under the square root. Don't miss the fact that I'm going to add those three numbers that multiply together. So as I do that, I go 0 0.004 squared minus 4 times 0 0.0034 times negative 125.3. Under the square root simplifies to the square root of 1.70496. Exactly. 
and then in the denominator I get 0 0.0068. So what I do with that now is I can separate that. I can say, well, because the quadratic formula always gives me two answers, I say always, but obviously if I, the number under the square root was zero, it would only give me one answer. But because it gives me two answers, um, then I can add that number, 0 0.704096, and then I can also subtract the number for the other solution. So the other solution is same thing, but now with a minus in between. I divide that by 0 0.0068 as well. So everything's the same except I have the minus there and the plus here. And so the first one, when I type that in my calculator, and you can do this to check as well, I get 191.4 because it says the nearest tenth up above. So make sure we put it in that. And we're also told that the S is the back speed in kilometers per hour. The second solution it gives me is negative 192.6 kilometers per hour. Well, obviously, we're not swinging backwards unless we've, we're have we a really bad batter. I don't know. Um, but this is the only one that makes sense. So we should have some explanation. We're not swinging backwards. And so we conclude for this question, therefore, to hit a 125-meter long home run, The bat speed must be 191.4 kilometers per hour. Well, I don't know about you, but I certainly have never gotten a ball to be that fast. But if you think about a bat, you're swinging it. Your hands are traveling much more slowly than the end of the bat is. And so this must be talking about the end of the speed at the end of the bat that's whipping around really fast. Well. Maybe this doesn't make sense. It's hard to picture something with such small a and b values. And so let's actually look what this, see what this looks like on a graph. I graphed this on Desmos. It's a little fuzzy, but hopefully you can see it okay. Um, what you can see is that when there's no bat speed, down here is negative 0.3. So if you, that, if you look at your equation again, because your equation was this, And so oh, it's negative 0.3. The equation was that. So this is the y-intercept, or in this case, the d-intercept, because this is d, and this is s down here. And so if you aren't swinging the bat at all, what's going to happen when the ball comes in is it's actually going to go backwards a little bit, because your bat is actually going to make the, it's going to slow down the ball, but not, um, not hit it forward at all. So if you're not swinging at all, then you're going to actually have the ball go backwards with a little bit of speed. Um, if you continue to swing harder and harder, it makes sense here that we can see the vertex is right on the uh, d-axis. And so the harder and harder you swing, the further and further the ball is going to go. And that is what looks like almost like an exponential relationship. And in fact, it's a quadratic relationship in this case. It just curves up. So the harder you swing, the further the ball is going to go faster. And so that's the idea here. If you come out here to 190, uh, 191.4, and we look up there to find this point, we find that 125 is right there, and there's our point that we just found. And so what we were actually finding is the two points where it's at 125. We were finding this point and this point. So essentially what we were doing is we were taking our x-axis and our s-axis axis in this case, and I'm moving it up 125, and I'm just solving the 125 intercepts. And so that's the whole idea. If you're given a value of y or of d in this case that is not 0, sub it in, rearrange it, set it equal to 0, and you're just solving for the intercepts that go through that line on the y-axis. So I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, as always, reach out and ask for help.